adenoma. More than one centimeter, we call it a macro adenoma. And there is one more classification. More than four centimeter tumor is basically known as a giant prolectinoma or a giant pituitary adenoma. So the classification, when somebody asks you an exam, you know anterior pituitary and posterior pituitary. And then when you talk about tumor, you either classify it on the size, less than one centimeter, more than one centimeters, or non-functioning or functioning pituitary tumors. So we are dealing with two functioning pituitary tumors today. So what are the functioning pituitary tumors? Functioning ka matlab hai ke aisa tumor jo hormone bana hai. Or non-functioning tumor ka matlab hai ke tumor pituitary gland mein betra hai, is sitting there, but it is not making any, any hormone. But because it is a tumor, it grows, it can suppress other, other hormone lines, as well as come to cause the local symptoms. So non-functioning tumor bhi behral tumor to hai. We are talking about functioning or secretory pituitary tumors. So number one is prolactinoma, the most common. Then comes acromegaly, Cushing's disease, and TSH adenoma. TSH adenoma, when we were hyperthyroidism, the approach to hyperthyroidism, and for those who didn't attend, you have the lecture saved on Edmodo. TSH adenoma, we discussed the other. The TSH level goes high, the FT4 goes high, and other hormones of the pituitary can go down. So we have already discussed TSH adenoma briefly, and it's very rare, I already told you. Cushing's disease, Dr. Akhba has already taught you. I'll be talking about prolectinoma and acromegaly today. So let's start and begin with prolectinoma. So again, this is the most common pituitary adenoma. So 10% of all brain tumors are there in pituitary and 50% of all pituitary tumors are prolectinoma. So pituitary ke agar saw tumors hai, 50 of them will be prolectinoma. Estimated prevalence is 60 to 100 per million. Higher prevalence rates of 44 to 60 per million per 100,000 is also reported. Five to 10 times predilection for females over males. So most of these endocrine gland problems, most of them will be more in females. I mean, we saw thyroid also, it's more common in females than in males. And again, pituitary tumors also predilection for females over males, five to 10 times more, right? Highest incidence rate is between women in 25 to 35 year age group. So this is, uh, the young reproductive age group women where you find these tumors the most. Hyperprolactinemia may be detected in as many as 40% acromegalyx as well. So acro acromegaly may be you get hyperprolactinemia uh, as one of the things going on in acromegaly as well. So epidemiology, this is the, this is the age group and you see this is the age group 25 to 35 and 40 where you get prolactinomas most. And the white bar is women. Women having much more cases than men in prolactinoma. So what is the clinical presentation? Now, the clinical presentation is threefold. So when, when people, when teachers ask you an exam, you have to be very fluent as to what you are answering, right? So there are three presentation folds, right? There are three ways of presenting it. There are three modes of presentation. Hyperprolactinemia causes hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism due to inhibitory effect of prolactin on GnRH release. So the first thing you're going to get in prolactinoma is hypogonadism. Now hypogonadism will be different in females and different in males. The symptom complex is very different. Again, the second thing will be macroprolactinoma can cause the mass effect because the pituitary gland is a small pea-sized gland you get one tumor that can suppress the other tumor lines, other cell lines, sorry. So you get other hormone deficiencies as well. And then you can get the mass effect. So there are three ways of presentation. First of all, uh, more prolactin causes hypogonadism. Secondly, the mass effect. Thirdly, other pituitary hormones going down. These are the three ways of presentation or three symptom complexes that you can see in prolactinoma. So again, what is the what is the presentation in a premenopausal woman and a postmenopausal woman? So hypogonadism in males will be hypogonadism. Hypogonadism in females is different. You get different symptoms in premenopausal women and different symptoms in postmenopausal women. So in premenopausal women, when the woman is still menstruating, you get usually it presents with uh, usually microprolactinomas are picked up 
in premenopausal women because in premenopausal women the effect of prolactinoma on the periods is quickly observed by the female and these females present when prolactinomas are small or microprolactinomas but in postmenopausal women because the uh, the presentation is not in the period so that doesn't get impaired so this presents late so again premenopausal women mostly presents with microprolactinomas oligomenorrhea amenorrhea or short luteal phase of the menstrual cycle hot flushes vaginal dryness decreased libido infertility very common in this part of the world galactorrhea osteopenia and osteoporosis if you ask me in a premenopausal woman if you are asked just two symptoms then those two symptoms are oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea that is the period getting delayed or just going away and the second symptom is hypo uh, galactorrhea the second symptom is galactorrhea so again if you see what about the prolactin level and hypogonadism what is the what is the relationship so prolactin level more than 100 now remember the normal range in some laboratories is up to 17 18 in some laboratories the normal range is 25 and then there is another thing known as macro prolactin which can falsely give you a high prolactin level but when you when you uh, give it to the lab and tell them rule out the macro prolactin then you get the original prolactin level which is the functioning prolactin molecule so prolactin level more than 100 causes overt hypogonadism 100 se zyada agar level hai to this causes overt hypogonadism amenorrhea hot flushes decreased libido vaginal dryness prolactin levels between 50 and 100 causes problems with the menstrual periods amenorrhea and oligomenorrhea and prolactin level less than 50 may not have any impact on the periods but it can lead to infertility now this is a very common reason for infertility in both males as well as females when you see infertility you check the prolactin level it comes out to be high so 20 to 50 you only get infertility 50 to 100 you start getting symptoms with the periods more than 100 you start getting symptoms with decreased libido vaginal dryness as well as galactorrhea again what are the clinical presentation in postmenopausal women so usually they present with usually they present with macro prolactinomas now post menopausal because periods are not there in the women and the first impact you get is infertility and oligomenorrhea agar female may periods nahi aa rahe in post menopausal age group then you don't get these symptoms then you get symptoms when the prolactin level becomes very high and the glands becomes increased in size and it gives you either the mass effects or decreasing other hormones So usually in macro prolactinomas you get galactorrhea which again can be rare but effectively you get the mass effect and you get the other hormones of the pituitary gland started to go down Again what is the clinical presentation in males usually present late with macro prolactinomas due to diagnostic delay Again in males also the diagnosis can get delayed you get decreased libido and impotence many patients they present in our clinics with decreased libido and impotence and a good number of them will have high prolactin levels and prolactinoma and this rule needs to be ruled out so whenever somebody comes to us with erectile dysfunction in our clinics we always 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 check their prolactin levels again in fertility oligospermia gynecomasia galactorrhea is very very rare in males and mass effect and and then again you know that because of the tumor size the other anterior pituitary hormones can go down again the diagnosis the prolactin level is very important now if you see the ordinary labs in the city the prolactin levels sometimes are not very reliable so you try and always check it from a good laboratory like our laboratory right so it has to be from a reliable laboratory it's very important then when you have done a prolactin level you should always have two prolactin levels to diagnose prolactinoma two prolactin levels and then rule out other causes of elevated prolactin levels pro motility agents can also give a high prolactin level pregnancy itself has a high prolactin level 
we had seen several cases of women coming to us with high prolactin levels not knowing that they had they have pregnancy because sometimes these women have oligomenorrhea because of other reasons they think this is oligomenorrhea going on high prolactin but when we check the beta hcg pregnancy comes out to be there so you have to be very careful ke koi dawaiyan to nahi hai jiski wajah se prolactin level badh rahe hain pregnancy ki wajah se to prolactin level nahi badh raha MRI of pituitary and hypothalamic region with contrast. So you see, when you are checking adrenal glands, you do a CT adrenal gland. When you are doing a prolactin level, when you when you are checking prolactinoma, you do an MRI pituitary. So again, visual field testing should be done with macro prolactinomas. If it's macro prolactinoma, if it's a macro gland, a pituitary, then you do a visual field. Otherwise, you don't necessarily need it. So what are the indications for treatment? macroadenoma you treat it enlarging microadenoma infertility bothers some galactoria gynecomasia hypogonadism or testosterone deficiency oligomenorrhea or amenorrhea but a woman who is 55 year old she doesn't want to get pregnant also there is no problem with infertility she already doesn't have periods has a microprolactinoma probably you may not need to treat it but let me tell you in most people you are definitely going to treat it what are the aims of treatment so reduction of prolactin levels and its clinical consequences this is the most important thing we don't treat numbers only we treat the clinical consequences and the bad impact that this may have on the patient remember this should be the goal for all of you you are in third year and you should know that it's not only about numbers whether it's prolactinoma or something else it's the quality of life and it's it's the quality of life that basically you're going to change uh, with treating things again so reduction of prolactin levels and reduction of tumor mass preservation of residual pituitary function baki hormone producing cells ko bachana hai prevention of continuing growth of tumor mass and very important is improvement in the quality of life treatment modalities you can either just observe medical treatment dopamine agonist surgical treatment radiotherapy the mainstay of treatment is medical treatment for prolactinomas yes this is a tumor in the human body that needs medical treatment mostly right so i'm going to tell you when to treat medically and when to treat surgically mostly it's the medical treatment dopamine agonist is the initial treatment of choice in all prolactinomas Now these drugs they inhibit prolactin secretion and reduce tumor volume by acting on the D2 dopamine receptor expressed on pituitary lactotrophs. So dopamine agonist is the word go. Dopamine agonist are twofold: ergot derivatives and non-ergot derivatives. Ergot derivatives are bromocriptan, cabergoline, pergolide, and lysuride, and non-ergot are the quinacolide. So what we chiefly use are these two, bromocriptine and cabergoline. And if you ask me which is the best one in the world at the moment, it is cabergoline. So this is a very important question also. Which is the best dopamine agonist that you're going to use for treatment of prolactinoma? So if you're all awake, can you just write in the chat box if you just listened what I said? Which is the best medication to treat prolactinoma? Three answers, and we'll move ahead, right? Come on, what are the what is the answer? Which is the best of these medications? to treat prolactinoma okay so you're all awake right so just wanted to have a check because you see sometimes this this post lunch period is a little bit dizzy and drowsy and things going on like this you're all awake that's nice to see good so cabergoline is the treatment of choice so again this is bromocriptan this is cabergoline zaire ye lecture mein sab aapko nahi yaad reh jayega but this lecture will come on in modo and you can just go again go through this again and again So bromocriptan initial dose is 0.6 to 1.2 mg daily but then the maintenance dose goes to twice or thrice daily din mein do teen baar lete hain bromocriptan cabergoline is 0.25 to 0.5 mg weekly iski 0.5 mg ki tablet aati hai aur once to twice weekly dete hain acha ye din mein do teen baar hai bromocriptan cabergoline hafte mein ek do baar hai so the compliance will obviously change right with bromocriptan you get a lot of nausea and Uh, abdominal discomfort bromocriptan ke sath sabse bada side effect nausea and abdominal discomfort cabergoline relatively fewer side effects if you see the half life bromocriptan ki half life is 6 to 20 hours din mein do se teen bar dena padta hai 
Kaber Golin, the half life is literally three to four days, and you have to give it once or twice weekly. Usually, I'm twice weekly. Did they? The patient better or not? The once weekly. Did they? Then, I said, "Stop." Finish. Success rate. Here, we are seeing 50% success with bromocriptin. With Kaber Golin, the success is 80 to 90%. Success. There are two parameters. Two parameters: prolactin normalization and reduction of the tumor size. These are the two modalities. or two key uh, indexes that you need to see for success follow up periodic prolactin measurement starting one month after therapy aapne start do bar prolactin level karaya karaya bada aaya aapne mri pituitary karaya tumor bhi aa gaya aapne dose dostenex shuru kar di ye kaber golin dostenex ke naam se milti hai you check prolactin level one month after therapy aur uske baad aap teen teen mahine pe usko check karte hain mri of the pituitary har ek saal pe repeat kare लेकिन अगर किसी को मैक्रो प्रोलेक्टिन है और उसका प्रोलेक्टिन लेवल भी कम नहीं हो रहा देन डू अ यू कैन डू एन एमआरआई पिट्यूटरी आफ्टर 3 मंथ्स रिमेंबर दैट इन 6 मंथ्स टाइम यू शुड हैव अ नॉर्मल प्रोलेक्टिन लेवल ऑन ट्रीटमेंट ऑन ट्रीटमेंट बट देन द प्रोलेक्टिन लेवल शुड नॉर्मलाइज व्हेन टू डिसकंटिन्यू ट्रीटमेंट सो थेरेपी मे बी टेपर्ड एंड परहैप्स डिसकंटिन्यूड इन पेशेंट्स हु हैव बीन ट्रीटेड फॉर एट लीस्ट 2 इयर्स इन एट लीस्ट 2 इयर्स 2 इयर्स की ट्रीटमेंट आपको देना चाहिए Who no longer have elevated prolactin and have no visible tumor remnant on the MRI. Medications ko two years ho jaye, tumor bhi shrink ho ke khatam ho gaya, prolactin level bhi normal ho gaya. Yes, it happens in this with with cabergoline as well as bromocriptin. Then you stop the treatment after two years of starting the treatment. Then you need to follow these patients. Prolactin level should be done every three months for the first year, or then you start six months later, then you start the treatment for a year. एमआरआई पर जब कराएंगे एक बार ट्रीटमेंट फिनिश हो गई रेमिशन में पेशेंट है फिर एमआरआई उसी वक्त कराएंगे व्हेन प्रोलैक्टिन लेवल स्टार्ट टू गो अप रेजिस्टेंट प्रोलैक्टिनोमास आर फेलियर टू अचीव नॉर्मल प्रोलैक्टिन लेवल एंड इनएबिलिटी टू इंड्यूस ट्यूमर श्रिंकेज बाय 50% इन 6 मंथ्स 6 महीने में प्रोलैक्टिन को नॉर्मल हो जाना चाहिए और ग्लैंड के साइज को आधा हो जाना चाहिए ट्यूमर के साइज को प्रोलैक्टिन पूरा कम हो जाएगा ट्यूमर साइज हाफ श्रिंक हो जाएगा ये है ट्रीटमेंट इसको कहते हैं सक्सेस अगर ये नहीं हुआ है दिस इज रेजिस्टेंट प्रोलेक्टिनोमा ब्रोमोक्रिप्टिन पे देखिए रेजिस्टेंस ज्यादा है केबर कोलिन में रेजिस्टेंस कम है दिस इज व्हाई केबर कोलिन इज द नंबर 1 ट्रीटमेंट इंडिकेशंस फॉर सर्जरी इंक्रीजिंग ट्यूमर साइज देखिए मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट है लेकिन कभी-कभी सर्जरी करते हैं कब करते हैं इंक्रीजिंग ट्यूमर साइज डिस्पाइट मेडिकल थेरेपी पिट्यूटरी एपोप्लेक्सी एपोप्लेक्सी यू हैव टू डू सर्जरी dopamine agonist resistant macroadenomas dopamine dopamine agonist resistant microadenoma in women seeking fertility persistent chiasmal compression persistent compression compression shuru mein hogi to bhi aap dawa denge to it will get better lekin agar persistent compression hai then you need to give surgery medically unresponsive cystic prolactinoma and in women seeking fertility macroadenoma in close proximity to optic chiasma CSF leak and when dopamine agonist is contraindicated, like in psychiatric patient, very very important. This is the transvenoidal surgery. I mean, out of hundred cases, shayad two or three may be zarurat nahi padti transvenoidal surgery. Surgical outcomes are good for microadenoma, eighty ninety percent success. Macroadenoma ke liye success kam hai. Transvenoidal surgery is the choice. Malignant prolactinoma, so very very rare again. Koi हजार केसेस में से एक केस होता है जो मिलेग्नेंट प्रोलेक्टिनोमा होता है टिमोजोलोमाइट इज द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ चॉइस दिस इज मेटास्टेटिक ट्यूमर इट स्प्रेड्स बट यूजुअली इट्स अ बेनाइन एडेनोमा प्रोलेक्टिनोमा एंड कैन बी ट्रीटेड इजीली रेडिएशन पे मैं बात ज्यादा नहीं करूंगा रेडिएशन इज वेरी वेरी रेयरली यूज्ड एंड वी हार्डली यूज इट बिकॉज़ वी हैव गॉट अ फैंटास्टिक मोडालिटी इन टर्म्स ऑफ मेडिसिंस अगेन अगर प्रेगनेंसी की बात करें तो प्रोलेक्टिन लेवल्स प्रेगनेंसी में नॉर्मली बढ़ते हैं prolactin levels pregnancy mein badhenge we know that so when pregnancy starts what happens is okay size of prolactinoma increases during pregnancy agar kisi ko pregnancy ho jaye with prolactinoma size will increase 2.7 <coughs> sorry for that that surely should not be covid in charge 2.7% of patients with microadenoma and 22% of patients with macroadenoma they exhibit a symptomatic increase in size during pregnancy मैक्रोएडिनोमा में ज्यादा ट्यूमर साइज बढ़ता है कंपेयर टू माइक्रोएडिनोमा 
ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी इंक्वायरी अबाउट हेड एक्स एंड चेंजेस इन विजन एवरी थ्री मंथ हर तीन महीने पे आप पूछें कि विजन में तो प्रॉब्लम नहीं है हेड तो नहीं है प्रोडक्टिन लेवल इज नॉट यूजफुल ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी विजुअल फील्ड टेस्टिंग शुड बी डन एवरी थ्री मंथ इन वुमेन विद ट्यूमर एक्सटेंडिंग टू सप्रा सेलर रीजन एंड दो वुमेन हु रिपोर्ट विजुअल चेंजेस एंड एम आर आई शुड बी डन इन प्रेगनेंसी विदाउट कॉन्ट्रास्ट राइट प्रोलेक्टिनोमा एंड प्रेगनेंसी वंस अगेन सो आई टोल्ड यू दैट यू कैन स्टॉप मेडिकेशन डिपेंडिंग ऑन द ट्यूमर साइज डिपेंडिंग ऑन वॉट गोइंग ऑन विद द ट्यूमर साइज If you have to do surgery, it should be a transvenoidal surgery. Or if surgery is required, so which trimester is the best for surgery? I told you in my last lecture also. Okay, so which trimester you would use as the ideal trimester to do pituitary surgery? Great. Second trimester, receiving answers privately, publicly, be they say that it's wrong, so there's no problem. Okay, second trimester, you're all correct. So, if surgery is contemplated, it should be done in the second trimester. It's just the next line, actually. Bromocriptin is preferred in pregnancy. Cabergoline can be used as a second-line agent. Moving on to acromegaly. So, here was a tumor, prolactinoma, in which you give medical treatment. Now, let's move on to acromegaly. Again, a very interesting tumor of the pituitary gland. We do not see it very, as often as we see prolactinomas, but we definitely see many acromegalic cases in this part of the world. So these are some of the famous personalities. I mean, even I have forgotten who they are. They're, they're actors, Andre the Giant, you know that, Richard Keel and uh, Hatton. I mean, acromegaly is a clinical syndrome that results from excessive secretion of growth hormone. So growth hormone, again, comes from anterior pituitary and acromegaly is a tumor of the growth hormone. Incidence is very, very less, 0.4 cases per 100,000. Prevalence is five to nine cases per 100,000. Patients are often 40 to 50 years of age at diagnosis. So again, this is the pituitary gland. It secretes the growth hormone. This growth hormone is converted into IGF-1 by the liver. And then this IGF-1 is what, what we measure basically. So again, clinical presentation. First of all, the direct effects of tumors. Now, when we talk about prolectin, we talk about micro-prolectinoma, but commonly we see in reproductive age group women. Because in 5 to 10 years, women are more than women. And in reproductive age group women, when there are periods that are present, the symptoms are easily picked up. In general, the prolectinoma is picked up in micro-prolectinoma stage, in females at least. Acromagaly is very different. Acromegaly is usually picked up in the macroadenoma stage. It is usually in the macroadenoma stage. Mein pick hota hai. By direct effects of tumors, headache, visual field defects, cranial nerve palsies, hypopituitarism, and hyperprolactinemia. Again, clinical presentation, excessive sweating, coarse, oily skin, frontal bossing, prognathism, increased spacing between the lower teeth, I'll show you. Increase in foot, hand, or head size, spade like hands, sausage shaped fingers, and voice changes. Joint stiffness 75%, back pain due to osteoporosis, temporomandibular arthritis, sensory motor polyneuropathy. Just look at the symptoms. Just look at the symptoms. You've got all sorts of symptoms, right? Carpal tunnel syndrome, sensation of weakness in the arms and legs, diplopia, skin tags, sleep apnea 50%. Visceral enlargement, both thyroid enlargement, heart enlargement, liver enlargement, cardiovascular abnormalities like hypertension, cardiomyopathy, insulin resistance like diabetes or prediabetes, increased risk of colonic neoplasm, increased frequency of thyroid cancers, hyperphosphatemia, huge, huge line of symptoms that we actually get. You see, this is the, the spacing between the lower teeth, especially you see uh, the, 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 the increased size of the tongue. You see the skin tag in this picture on the lower right corner of your page. And here you see the prognathism, mandible ahead of the maxilla, basically. And you also see the skin tags here. So you're going to get this presentation. You can go back and read this. Serum IGF-1 concentration. Now you see we do not measure growth hormone. Growth hormone is released in pulses. So you've got zero, full, zero, 100%, zero, 100%. So you don't check your growth hormone, random growth hormone, if it comes out to be normal, uh, shows that this may not be an acromegaly, but if it comes out to be more, I mean, you, you can't still define it. So the best test to do is as a screening test, endocrinology, 
जब भी टेस्ट होते हैं ना तो एक टेस्ट होता है स्क्रीनिंग टेस्ट और एक होता है कंफर्मेटरी टेस्ट फिर जब बायोकेमिकल कंफर्मेशन हो जाती है फिर उसकी रेडियोलॉजिक इमेजिंग उसके बाद होती है बायोकेमिकल के बाद रेडियोलॉजिकल पहले देखना है होमोन आ कहा से रहे फिर उसकी इमेजिंग होती है और जब टेस्ट होते हैं तो एक स्क्रीनिंग टेस्ट होता है और एक कंफर्मेटरी टेस्ट होता है यूजली इन एंडोक्रिन हैं तो ग्रोथ हार्मोन विल सप्रेस मीठा खाने से ग्रोथ हार्मोन विल सप्रेस सो व्हेन यू गिव ग्रोथ हार्मोन व्हेन यू गिव ग्लूकोस द ग्रोथ हार्मोन गोस डाउन लेस देन 1 नैनोग्राम फ्रॉम एमएल विद इन द नेक्स्ट 2 आवर्स सो इफ आई आस्क यू व्हाट इज इट्स सवाल मैं से कुछ तो लेट्स सी हाउ मच यू आर अवेक राइट सो एक्रोमेगली इज डायग्नोस्ड मोस्टली एज अ माइक्रो एडेनोमा और अ मैक्रो एडेनोमा एक्रोमेगली इज डायग्नोस्ड mostly as a microadenoma or a macroadenoma oh wonderful okay and you know the fantastic fantastic so you know that right and and you know that prolactinoma is diagnosed mostly as a microadenoma in at least at least in premenopausal women so let's move move forward and I'll keep posing questions because i know you'll be a little sleepy after a long day so diagnosis once growth hormone hypersecretion is confirmed next step is an mri pituitary If the MRI pituitary is normal, then you need to do an abdominal and chest CT scan to find out where the tumor is, where these where these growth hormone is, where this growth hormone is coming from. There is another test, somatostatin receptor scintigraphy. This is not done in this part of the world, very difficultly arranged in certain centers because uh, it's uh, it's not done in routine. Again, plasma GHRH measurement can be helpful. Again, this is not done in this part of the world. Mainly, you do an IGF-1, glucose tolerance test, an MRI, and mostly you're going to get to the diagnosis because this is a macroadenoma, so you mostly get the right diagnosis. Again, clinical features of acromegaly. This is just revision. IGF-1 normal, fantastic, no acromegaly. If IGF-1 is elevated, go to the confirmatory test of OGTT. OGTT suppressed. This is not acromegaly. OGTT uh, not suppressed. Growth hormone is high. This is acromegaly. Go and do an MRI pituitary. If you find a mass, this is pituitary growth hormone tumor. If you don't find a tumor, then you do a chest CT and an abdominal CT or an MRI to find the extra pituitary growth hormone tumors. So again, goal of treatment: decrease the serum IGF-1 concentration within the reference range. IGF-1 को normal करना है. याद रखें, goal वो ही है जो हमने पहले discuss किया. Improving the quality of life. Somebody who is 70 years old, growth hormone tumor, acromegaly, doing nothing, you're not going to treat it if if it's not causing huge problems, right? So decrease IGF-1 concentration. Decrease the serum growth hormone concentration to less than one at all times. Reduce. हम follow IGF-1 ही करते हैं लेकिन ठीक है. Reduce tumor size and eliminate mass effects. Preserve normal pituitary function. बाकी hormones को बचाना है. Correct any abnormalities in levels of serum prolactin, thyroxine, cortisol, testosterone, and estradiol. And eliminate comorbid secondary complications like diabetes, hypertension, cardiomyopathy, many others above, as I've already discussed. Coming up to the treatment, uh, which is surgery. So again, you see, in prolactinoma, the first-line treatment is medical. In acromegaly, the first-line treatment is surgery. So again, interesting, right? So TSS, transvenoidal surgery, is the treatment of choice for resectable pituitary tumor. Serum growth hormone concentration typically they fall to normal within one to two hours. Serum IGF-1 concentration fall to normal in seven to ten days, but can remain high for several months. इसीलिए हम सर्जरी के नेक्स्ट दो दिन बाद ग्रोथ हार्मोन चेक कर लेते हैं कि नॉर्मल हो गया है कि नहीं बट आईजीएफ वन लेवल वी एक्चुअली चेक आफ्टर थ्री मंथ्स सॉफ्ट इश्यू स्वेलिंग एंड हाइपरग्लाइसीमिया कैन डिमिनिश रिमार्केबली इन अ फ्यू डेज विजन एंड हेडेक्स कैन आल्सो इंप्रूव 
bony changes do not resolve even after successful treatment. So you have to take another surgeries to correct the bony problems that are there. Monitoring for electrolyte abnormalities, including diabetes insipidus and syndrome of inappropriate secretion of the ADH for up to two weeks after surgery. FT4 and cortisol should be monitored and replaced. Look, when we do surgery, we TSS and remove the gland, the tumor. Ko. So there is a chance that we also, the surgeon also takes out the, 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 the cells which are producing other cell lines. So surgery, se pehle bhi dusri cell lines hoti hai, hormones hoti hai. Or surgery ke baad bhi karane hai dusre hormones. So let me ask a question to all of you, hoping that you all are still awake, which I'm sure you would be, inshallah. अगर हमें thyroid status देखना हो pituitary gland के अंदर, मैं देखना चाहता हूँ after surgery कि thyroid hormone normal है कि नहीं, तो मैं thyroid का कौन सा एक test कराऊँगा जो मुझे thyroid function बताए in a pituitary gland? Thyroid का कौन सा test कराएँगे? TSH कराएँगे, FT4 कराएँगे, FT3 कराएँगे, thyroid antibody कराएँगे, ultrasound neck कराएँगे, एक test कोई लिख दें which will tell us that the thyroid function is normal or not in any pituitary tumor. How do we test in any pituitary tumor in pituitary tumor? Yes, your answer on the chat box. TSH levels, TSH, FT4, and FT3. Yes, your answer on the chat box. TSH levels, TSH, 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 oh my God. Okay, TSH, fantastic, fantastic. So, okay. So, suppose, for example, your TSH cells are taken off, right? and then your free T4 from your interior of the neck goes down, TSH to respond hi nahi karega. TSH ke cells hi nikal gaye. Toh wo toh 2 ka TSH hai toh bichara 2 se 8 ho hi nahi paara. Toh pituitary tumor kisi ko bhi ho, aur aapko pituitary function dekhna hai, toh aap TSH nahi karayenge. Excellent from the iPhone, right? FT4. So, some of my trainees are also sitting in the class to get the experience. So, FT4 karayenge ab aap. FT4 karayenge. So FT4 will tell you whether the pituitary TSH is normal or not. If you want to see the ACTH, you will have to do the cortisol first. If you want to see the pituitary function, you will have to do the cortisol first. If the cortisol is normal, that's okay. If FT4 is normal, that's okay. Because where are the signals from the pituitary gland? If you want to see male hormone, for example, you want to see लिबिडो मेल 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 होमोन लेवल्स कैसे हैं तो आप एलएच एफएसएच कराएंगे या आप टेस्टोस्टेरोन कराएंगे तू सी डी पिचुट्री फंक्शन यस यू विल डू अ यस यू विल डू टेस्टोस्टेरोन लेवल्स तो पिचुट्री के कुछ चीजें जैसे प्रोलेक्टिन तो यहीं से चेक हो गया लेकिन हमने ग्रोथ होमोन चेक नहीं किया हमने अगर TSH ज़्यादा आ जाता है तो तो ये primary hypothyroidism है और अगर FT4 कम है और TSH normal है तो then this is secondary hypothyroidism coming from the pituitary. You all have understood this, I hope, right? Okay, let's move ahead. So post-op follow-up. Again, the fasting growth hormone level should be mainly measured early post-operatively. A post-operative day of one GS level should be low. IGF one should be uh, checked after three months. I was, as I have already told you, OGTT. If you want to do it, you can do it every two weeks after surgery. MRI should be done three months after surgery. So IGF one level be surgery ke three months baad. MRI be surgery ke three months baad. Surgical complications: deficiency of one or more pituitary hormones, central diabetes insipidus. CSF rhinorrhea, meningitis, and perioperative mortality rate is very low, less than 1%. Coming up on the treatment, secondary therapy when surgery alone has not reduced some growth hormone to normal. Achha, prolectinoma may cure rate 80-90%. Acromegaly may cure rate what come in. Microadenoma may the cure nahi hai. Microadenoma may the cure rate is not as high as prolectinoma. So again, if surgery fail ho gai, so then you can have a medical therapy. In those who have unacceptable surgical risk, this MI patient has EF 20%, surgery ni osakti, medical treatment. In those patients who refuse surgery, in those who have adenomas that are unlikely to be cured surgically. Treatment modalities, octreotide, which is uh, uh, octreotide, LAR, landreotide, SR, and landreotide autotype. I can't do everything. 
the important thing is that when when you are dealing with the, uh, the somatostatin analog therapy you need to understand the dosages so octreotide is can be given twice or thrice daily and the lar version is given once a month this is a once a month injection and this is subcutaneous which is given twice or thrice daily usually jo hum use karte hain clinical practice mein wo octreotide lar use karte hain once a month so when we are talking about efficacy of the somatostatin therapy Uh, the efficacy should be judged by normalization of the growth hormone and IGF-1 concentration, shrinkage of the adenoma size, and improvement in the clinical manifestation of acromegaly. Quality of life better ho, tumor ka size kam hona chahiye, IGF-1 ko kam hona chahiye. This is how you go about it. Common symptoms are nausea and vomiting, abdominal discomfort, side effects of somatostatin common. nausea vomiting sabse common yahi hai nausea vomiting and abdominal discomfort these are the main things reduced appetite bloating and loose stools is also something that we commonly see and rare are pancreatitis and hepatitis jo hum bahut hi rarely dekhte hain so cabergolin more effective than promocriptin again dekhiye dopamine agonist bhi diye jate hain acromegaly because 40% of the acromegalics will have a high prolactin So even dopamine agonists be diye jaate. Cabergolin is more effective than bromocriptin. Many of my patients of acromegaly they are on cabergolin, and then you can give a combination of cabergolin and somatostatin analog as well. Cabergolin sirf usi acromegalic mein kam karega jinka prolactin level zada hoga. That that's the very important thing. This is pegrisomant, which is a growth hormone receptor antagonist. Pakistan mein available nahi hai. Bahut mushkil se baar se mangwana padta hai. hardly iski zarurat padti hai because mostly we are using surgery and the somatostatin analogs combination therapy you can add cabergolin to somatostatin therapy as i already told you radiation therapy is very important and in acromegaly mostly after surgery the patient has to go for radiation surgery ke baad usually radiation karai jati hai conventional radiation lekin ab chuke gamma knife aur cyber knife aa gayi hai so we use that as well So again, you see diagnosis of acromegaly, surgery, failed surgery. You go towards medical therapy. Successful surgery हो गई है तो आप IGF-1 repeat करते रहें तीन तीन महीने पे. Surgery fail हो जाए, you go towards medical treatment. Again, if you see the results of surgery in a microadenoma are good, 80-90 percent, but macroadenoma, the result of even surgery is not as good. ये चार्ट बहुत ही इट्स अ ब्यूटीफुल चार्ट वी आर जस्ट क्लोजिंग फॉर द फिनिश टाइम आई कैन रीड इट ऑल लेकिन अच्छा है कि ये एडमोडो पे लेक्चर आएगा तो यू कैन जस्ट गो ऑन एंड रीड दिस लेटर ऑन सो अगेन एक्रोमेगली इन प्रेगनेंसी देखिए हर बीमारी को प्रेगनेंसी में जरूर पड़ा करें अपने शोबे की हर बीमारी आपको प्रेगनेंसी में पता होनी चाहिए एज अ मेडिकल स्टूडेंट यू शुड नो एवरीथिंग फॉर प्रेगनेंसी डेंगू की ट्रीटमेंट प्रेगनेंसी में क्या है मलेरिया की ट्रीटमेंट क्या है टाइफॉइड की ट्रीटमेंट क्या है Acromegaly ki treatment kya, prolactinoma ki treatment kya. Prolactinoma mein humne baat ki ki we can safely stop medication, but in somebody has macroadenoma, we can continue with that. Bromocriptin is preferred in pregnancy. Aapko yaad hai maine bataya, cabergolin can be used. Acromegaly in pregnancy, pituitary growth hormone is the primary circulating growth hormone during first trimester, and the central growth hormone is the primary circulating growth hormone during second and third trimester. increase in the placental growth hormone causes an increase in igf1 levels during normal pregnancy so ye increase igf1 normal pregnancy mein bhi ho raha so serum igf1 levels are not as useful for monitoring wohi baat jo prolactin nahi check karana tha prolactinoma mein growth hormone excess acromegaly mein igf1 level karane ka koi fayda nahi igf1 levels typically do not increase by more than 25 to 50% above pre pregnant levels ideally pregnancy should be postponed till the acromegaly is under control if the patient becomes pregnant routine monitoring of igf1 during pregnancy may not be necessary medical therapy can be safely withdrawn when pregnancy is confirmed since majority of small pituitary tumors do not grow during pregnancy remember acromegaly is a slow growing tumor so our pregnancy 9 months chhod bhi denge so probably nothing will go wrong and if therapy is necessary use dopamine agonist in pregnancy or agar surgery karni pade to you guys know it so quick three questions that i will ask you can also post your questions what is the confirmatory test for acromegaly 
What is the confirmatory test to diagnose acromegaly? Perfect. OGTT. Yes, OGTT. Achha, sirf, o, F, a fantastic answer. Lekin jab hume laboratory mein likhna hota hai, fantastic. Great. Thank you. Uh, a, a good clap for all of you. Uh, you have been keen listeners as always. So OGTT to see growth hormone suppression. This is when we uh, lab order the growth OGTT glucose tolerance test for growth hormone suppression to see the growth hormone suppression. So growth hormone will suppress or not suppress. Usually, normally, normal logo mein, when we do OGTT, the growth hormone will suppress or not suppress. Normal logo. Mein. Normal logo. Yes, this is a question. Suppress. Fantastic. So suppress. Good. Okay. So when I ask you, which is the best radiological imaging for pituitary gland? Perfect. MRI. Fantastic. Which is the best imaging technique for adrenal glands? Yes, adrenal glands. I told you in my lecture, oh, ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So ultrasound, somebody has sent me a private message for an ultrasound. Yes, it has to be a CT scan. But ultrasound is very operator dependent. If you look at it, the ultrasound is normal. Okay? Yes, CT adrenal glands or CT adrenal glands with two things we write, Hounsfield units or washout. We say HU, Hounsfield unit. Or wash out with the CD adrenal give out to the our lecture is prepared on which is the best treatment for acromegaly, which is the treatment of choice for acromegaly. This should be my last question to you, and then you can ask your questions. Which is the best treatment for acromegaly? Okay, which is the best treatment for acromegaly? Surgery, medications. So if I say cabergoline is a better choice, my jumla sunlin, cabergoline is a better choice than surgery to treat acromegaly. True or false? Cabergoline is a better choice than surgery to treat acromegaly. Surgery is a better choice. This is what you mean? Okay, so true, false. Oh, you're all awake. Uh, true. Oh, true, false. False, false, false. Now, surgery is the ideal treatment for acromegaly. With this, my questions are all finished. Some of them are still left. You're going to get quiz. No, true, no, false. My question was, Kabergoline is better than surgery for acromegaly. No, no. Acromegaly is better than surgery. Next line is medications. Then medications are somatostatin analogs or dopamine agonist. Great. Good. Thank you very much once again. If you have any question, you're free to ask here. Uh, I have received a couple of questions on Edmodo also. I'm sorry I have not asked on Edmodo messaging. Maybe the Javani de Sagom Jaldi De Dunga. You can ask on Edmodo also, on my email also, in my office also. You're most welcome. Uh, I'll try